Officials in Murfreesboro say they're preparing for more flooding. The Big Muddy River is expected to crest Wednesday. This is video from Riverside Park in Murfreesboro. You can see the river has already taken over a majority of the low-lying area. We'll be keeping an area, an eye on that area, over the next couple of days. Rising floodwaters in southeast Missouri are forcing some residents out of their homes. First responders are worried about rising river levels, especially at the Black River levee. That's where we find News 3's Brandon Murano tonight. And Brandon, what are authorities expecting there? Well, Mark, they've been out here on the south side of town all day today. And as you can see behind me, water's already covered parts of the road. They've been warning residents to get out of their homes before the rising floodwaters reach their houses. Now the Black River Coliseum you see behind me here is being used as a temporary evacuation shelter for those who have already been forced out of their homes here in Poplar Bluff and the surrounding communities. The National Weather Service in Paducah has also issued a flash flood warning for the area. They expect Cape Girardeau, Jackson, Perryville, Dexter, Scott City, and Poplar Bluff to experience flooding. That warning expires here in about 30 minutes, and although the National Weather Service expects the threat for additional heavy rain to be over, they do say creeks, streams, rivers, and areas already affected will, be, will remain flooded today. Now, if you come across a flooded roadway, the tip is to turn around and don't drown. Just six inches of flood water can knock you off your feet, and just two feet of water has the ability to sweep your vehicle off the road. Poplar Bluff police tell me they've been walking door to door today warning residents living near the Black River levee on the south side of town to take the proper precautions and evacuate their homes if necessary. Now over the last five days, Poplar Bluff and the surrounding area has been hit with more than six inches of rain. Now that's created problems here like not letting the water soak into the ground or drain properly. Just one of the factors causing this flooding. And Brandon, how many people are currently staying at the Coliseum and what are they saying about all this flooding? Well, Mark, there are 96 people currently staying at the Coliseum. That was a, a little bit earlier this afternoon, so those numbers uh, might be up just a little bit. They do expect the Black River to crest around 22 feet. And a lot of the people staying here, they, they've got positive spirits, but uh, they're really worried about their homes. You know, the last big flood here in 2011 uh, really gave them a scare. And a couple of people I talked to today uh, are, are just really anxious to get back home. For now, live in Poplar Bluff, Brandon Morano, News 3. And the severe flooding turned deadly in other parts of Missouri. In Crocker, Missouri, that's near Rolla, authorities say an 18-year-old man and a 72-year-old woman died after floodwaters swept away their vehicles. And early yesterday morning, also in Pulaski County, Missouri, a man died after his vehicle was caught in flash flooding. In Christian County, Missouri, a woman died after a vehicle she was riding in was swept off a highway by floodwaters. In Williamson County, weekend rains washed out culverts, shoulders, and entire roads. News 3's Ronnie LaForge shows us how road crews are already working to repair the damage. I'm standing on the side of Old Frankfort Road just east of Johnston City, and I want to show you the kind of damage that water can do when it comes up over the road, even for just a short period of time. It can peel off the surface of the road and then wash out the shoulder. County road crews kept busy Monday repairing damaged roads like Strawberry Lane in Cambria. Greg Smothers with the Williamson County Highway Department says his crews have their work cut out for them. We've got uh, a couple spots that are pretty severe. Uh, we've done temporary repairs until we can get back and do some more work to them. Like this near washout on Spillway Road, crews quickly blocked off traffic and made minor repairs to keep it from getting worse until the water recedes enough for them to get back in and fix it. West on Cardinal and then strawberries right here. Smothers says the county is aware many roads need to be fixed, but he asked those living in Williamson County to be patient. If there's a location, we'll get to it. We, uh, it's gonna take some time. Smothers says over the next couple of weeks, these road crews are gonna be out trying to get the roads back to normal. So just be cautious and give them plenty of room. In Williamson County, Ronnie LaForge, News 3. Also in Williamson County, Reed Cemetery Road east of Heron will be closed tomorrow. That road will be shut down between Decatur Road and Stotler Road to allow crews to replace a culvert. Work is expected to be completed by 3 tomorrow afternoon. We have many more road closings listed on our website. To Perry County, where authorities conducted an unconventional water rescue.
Yesterday, an officer found a vehicle parked in floodwaters on Davisville Road near Cole Street. The vehicle was tied to a fence post and inside was Philip Morrison of El Dorado. Authorities from several different agencies tried for more than an hour to get Morrison out of the floodwater. Police say Morrison was acting erratic and had to be physically removed from the vehicle. He was transported to a local hospital for evaluation. Governor Rauner has activated emergency resources to help areas affected by flooding. The governor announced this morning that the State Emergency Operations Center is up and running. This means state agencies are ready to quickly respond to flooding in communities around the state. Rauner's office says so far inmate crews are helping with sandbagging in Murfreesboro and DeSoto. Sandbags are also being delivered to Grand Tower and the Menard Correctional Facility. If you must travel, the Illinois Department of Transportation's website can help you with road conditions and closures. Go to gettingaroundillinois.com for a map and a list of statewide flood-related road closures.